started yet. Easy, but at least now, at least now this meeting pop up is being live streamed. If you don't Yay. like that, you have to leave. Give me that notification. Erica, are you recording the Zoom call? I am. Oh, okay. I'm surprised. Yep. Ooh. I got Did some people... new dice. Did it not notify you? It does. Okay. okay. All right. Back to important business. Uh, I Google search for uh, the best cartoons <sighs> produced in Canada, and I got a horrible listicle about uh, fantastic <laughs> cartoons produced in or with Canada. Um, number 10, which I was excited to see on the list because I've been watching it, and it's pretty uh, awesome slash awful. Uh, Cyber 6, which is a very, like, anime-inspired uh, Canadian animation. Number 9, Reboot. Uh, oh, I love Reboot. A show I've never heard of, number 8, because it was created while I was technically an adult and watching slightly fewer cartoons. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Canadians, can you tell me anything about Martin Mystery? 2003 nope. or 2006? No? No. Also um, too old. Yeah, too old. Uh, Beast Wars Transformers, 1996 to 1999. That seems, I assume that they just got that sweet uh, reboot money for their <laughs> mediocre CGI. Uh, <laughs> a show called 16, that is the numeral six. Teen, I am not familiar with because it's in the 2000s. Uh, Clone High 2002. Uh, Ooh. yeah, Phil Lord. Uh, um, and the other guy, the other guy, <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> and the guy he also works with on stuff. Uh, okay, here's more quality car uh, Canadian cartoons for you. Uh, Annette, The Raccoons. Oh, classic, oh, yeah, okay. Even I know about the raccoons, <laughs> I used to I watch that all them. the time. Oh, uh, number three. Arthur. Uh, I've not yep. seen Arthur, but I know he's that's based on a book, right? Yeah. And I think slightly like I was a little bit too old for that one. Gotcha. But I am familiar with it. Uh, Ed, Ed, Ed and Eddie is apparently a Canadian cartoon. Uh, I, I know that. Yeah. Never seen not it, but I know it's on Cartoon it. Network. I think it was mm -hmm. somewhat popular. And then uh, this apparently is a is a co-production between uh, Canada and a little country called the United States of America. Uh, oh. The uh, underground. No one's ever heard of it. My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. So, <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah. How can so that's what we produced that? together. It was produced I don't by know. Hasbro. I am looking Island at this, based company. this list that seems questionable. They probably got post-production money from Quebec, like every yeah. other movie in the world. Yeah. So, um, well, I had heard of half of those so <laughs> we got that going for us uh welcome live stream slash bootleg listeners erica your the bootleg's going now because you're already recording the zoom everything's yep. great uh we hope that this is working and that you can hear us um mm -hmm. yeah there are four people that. watching already uh seeker like gadget it. has confirmed Thanks, video and gadget. audio Secret um, Spoll informs us that we got raccoons in the UK too. I assume they mean <laughs> the show. They did use title caps and not just the animal raccoons. <laughs> um, but, and in fact, I don't know. So well, tell me, do you get raccoons? No article uh, in the, in, in the UK. I, my sense is that they are a North American animal, but you can tell me. Uh, all right. So things are working. Uh, if anyone wants to post a link in places, I will put the YouTube link is in Slack there. I am now going to close Slack because it eats up too much memory on my my little computer. Um, and I'm going to post that link in some places. I feel like there's a cat up to no good around here, but I can't figure I mean, out. I feel like that, that's a very, isn't very Isn't that safe always bet. true? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, well, one's I mean, just sleeping on the floor here. Okay. I mean, you, I assume you meant like in immediate proximity as opposed to yes. like in your house. Yes, um, like in the office. Nick's not home. So if I shut the door, then they just all like, sit outside the door and, and complain. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. And just wait. Um, yeah. All right. Tony Spole answered your question. They do not have the animal in UK. You do so. not. Wow. Well, you know, I mean, I learned something. I know. I, I know. Raccoons are a divisive uh, animal uh, in the, in America. Some people find them uh, very adorable. Some people find them terrifying. I think it ultimately comes down to how do you feel about small animals that have hands, little 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 hands with little that they can do all kinds of things right um they're they're kind of like you know i think they're a little too close to they're in that like 
uncanny valley between say like monkeys and rabbits is where raccoons live for some people uh and it's you know it's, interesting yeah i don't know if, anyway if they had welcome raccoons, to they been wednesday night the raccoon Rose. talk if they sorry say it again monty <laughs> If, if the UK had raccoons, they would have been all over wind in the willows. Oh, you're right. That's true. Mm. That makes sense. Um, all right. So we are setting up here for playing some Total Party Kill. Keys from the Golden Vault, specifically the adventure Prisoner 13. If you're thinking, gee, that doesn't sound familiar. Um, did I miss something? Uh, we have not <laughs> we we started this this adventure in the far off year of 2023 our last session was in december uh you'll note that it is not january or february or even march anymore so you know scheduling makes fools of us all there were a lot of challenging things but we are back together this is the adventure i call it the the prison break adventure but they actually kind of just walked into the prison with <laughs> valid cover identities they but may have wait. to get their, but wait <laughs> but they may have to get their way out um <laughs> So right, and now is the time where everybody gets to ping the map. This is the best time of all. Oh. Everybody, please, please ping the map. So many map pings. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, map pingers. Okay. All right. And I'll do my one last ping. Boom. We are We're done pinging the map. I don't, Thank you. I don't remember how to ping. I need to click and hold. Right, there we go. Oh, there we go. Last, okay. Two last pings. <laughs> players uh we did a little bit of recap off air anything that you need to remind each other of before we start the adventure uh before we start the session formal um there was something i think i had featherfall with the intention that we could all jump out the top of the tower and float gracefully to freedom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that sounds familiar I also that... have Dimension Door so we can get to the top of the tower and oh. then jump out of it. How right. far does Dimension Door work? Oh. 200 feet. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's a really, really small dimension. Uh, I was like, can you just leave the, the prison? Can the Dimension Door just take you home? Because um, then you don't have to jump off a tower. Um, no silly goose. Okay. So a reminder that I've got our, our stuff because mm. I've got the bag of holding. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. It's going to be real inconvenient when you're thrown into yeah. solitary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. But we will work that out uh, on, uh, you know, in the adventure, in the story that we tell together. Because remember, when you put yourself in a difficult situation, you also put me, the dungeon master, your friend and confidant in a difficult situation where I must you know just kind of avert eye contact as i watch you die slowly um i mean no as i help you or out quickly yeah <laughs> you, you wish it was kill us quickly, quickly tony um, so have it be a nuke just yeah blah, and we're all gone rocks fall rocks <laughs> fall <laughs> mm. <laughs> Welcome back to Total Party Kill. It's me, Tony Sindelar, a dungeon master. I use he, him pronouns. And today we are continuing one of our uh, adventures from the Keys from the Golden Vault series of adventure, specifically the Prisoner 13 adventure, where our intrepid band of Keys have been sent to the faraway remote prison Revel's End uh, in order to make contact with the titular Prisoner 13 and learn a secret from them that they need in order to open a long loss, I don't know, misplaced, secreted away vault full of wealth that Prisoner 13 ripped off from some people. Uh, let me introduce those people who uh, I think they, I don't know if they will introduce their characters, the identities their characters are currently operating under, or just themselves. We'll find out together, starting with uh, Mr. Chip Sutter. Chip, welcome back. Uh, we roped you back into Dungeons and Dragons. It had been a long time. And, you know, let's just, we really have uh, thrown you into the deep end here. Thanks for coming back to Total Party Kill. Uh, clearly, I am atoning for something. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so my character is Josh Molas. Uh, he is a chaotic, good uh, youth pastor ba of, mm -hmm. of chaos, basically, uh, although that's redundant. Uh, he is currently uh, pretending to be uh, somebody named Ken, um, just Ken, mm -hmm. and he's trying to help um, help Lincoln's character uh, pull off a whole lot of um, fake, uh, a whole lot of fake uh, 
pa- uh, prisoner um, yeah. advocacy work. Some 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 flim flam, some uh, chicanery, uh, some shenanigans. Also joining us, it's Erica Ensign. Erica, welcome back to Total Party Kill. I think we are legally required to have you on all adventures. Oh no, so much work <laughs> for me. That's okay. I don't mind. I get paid, don't I? Oh shoot! I should really read the fine print before mm. I created these things. Uh, I am playing Levithia Duisigri, uh, pronouns she/her, just like mine. Uh, Levithia is a human ranger, but right now she is known by the name, which I wish I would have used for the entire <laughs> character. Maybe my next character will be Lexi Shrapnel. Mm. <laughs> Not too late to change your name to Lexi Shrapnel, everybody. Uh, if you do change your name to Lexi Shrapnel or your name is already Lexi Shrapnel, please let me know. We'll send you a t-shirt or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dope. Also, also joining us, it's Monty Ashley. Uh, you know, just just being Monty. How's it going? Hey, Tony. Uh, I am, as you say, Monty Ashley. My pronouns are he, him. Those are also the, pro- the pronouns of the character I am playing, who is Krong, the bugbear rogue. Uh, Krong is currently disguised as a humble maintenance person named Diogenes Mainframe. And I do have a hat of disguise, so I do not look like a bugbear at any given moment. Mm. Also, 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 also joining us, it's Annette Weirstra. Annette, welcome back to Prisoner 13. Thank you. I am playing Jay Raff, and both our pronouns are she, her. Jay is an Asimar paladin who is just a little bit goth and is really into the Raven Queen. But right now, she is pretending to be a prisoner guard, and her name is Anders Carrots. But we Mm. spelt carrots really fancy because we made that name up on the spur of the spot, (laughs) and we did not do as well as Erica. (laughs) <laughs> Lexi Shrapnel. Um, all right. And last but certainly not least, uh, welcome back, Lincoln Hayes. Hello, Tony. Thank you very much. Lincoln Hayes, he, him, his. I'm playing Xantar Quickhands, a deep gnome sorcerer who's a big fan of Krongs and is apologetic to <laughs> Josh for <laughs> last time. Mm. Well, but anyway... S- Speaking of last time, uh, as you may have picked up, our adventures have made it to uh, Rebel's End, this faraway icy remote prison, and they have, uh, through a variety of false identities, infiltrated the prison. Things get a little tricky here because we have player names, uh, character names, and then character aliases, and technically one character has a second alias (laughs) alias <laughs> because things weren't complicated enough so just to recap um josh and xanter have infiltrated the prison as uh representing the Faerun prisoners liberty uh, association basically prisoner inspectors uh and they they are here to you know to, to conduct inspections meet with the staff and they started off with meeting with the warden more on that soon. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Annette is is joining us as uh, Jay Raff. Jay is uh, has has taken on the role of prison guard. Um, Monty uh, slash uh, Krong uh, is uh, taking on the role of a uh, um, maintenance worker, which provides Bull access kind worker. of yeah low, provides kind of low level access to the whole prison and. Uh, 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 Erica as the, of course, Levithia, but also as Lexi Shrapnel uh, is a cook in the in the prison. So basically, they but tw- their powers combined have a lot of access to a lot of different parts of the prison. And that's good, because in addition to the main quest of, uh, you know, get the get the desired information from Prisoner 13, the Golden Vault has saddled them with some side quests. Uh, they need to make contact uh, with a one of the the counselors on the adjudication uh, council. They need to get something to one prisoner. They need to arrange for a corrupt guard to be, uh, you know, knocked out of his position of power and so on. So there's like there's there's a lot of things to do. Of course, perhaps the most important thing is not get caught. Um, as part of their cover of meeting with the uh, the warden, Xanter and Josh did use some magic. Uh, Xanter took on a second <laughs> false identity. <laughs> Sorry, 
technically only Xanter did magic. Josh was present while illegal magic was being done. <laughs> uh, Xanter uh, created uh, the identity, the second fake identity of Norma, uh, representative of the uh, Faerun Prisoners Alliance, and successfully cast Charm Person on the Warden. That's right. The Warden of Revel's End won Marta Manthanis, a high-level, somewhat retired wizard, was successfully charmed and uh, with her new status as trusted co-worker, uh, handed over a good deal of help uh, to our friends. But there is a ticking clock here. For the way Charm Person works is that a person is, you know, your friend for one hour, after which they know that they were magically manipulated. So in one hour, the warden of the prison is going to realize, hey, something's going on here. And hey, I'm a powerful wizard that runs a large uh, prison industrial complex and things are going to happen. So we start our adventure today with that ticking clock. Uh, of the hour now it's challenging in Dungeons and Dragons how do we do things because some stuff happens in real time some stuff happens faster and a lot of stuff happens slower we can also have things happening in parallel but th let me set the stage there now one of the last things that you kind of uh, arranged with uh, Warden Marthanis before you bid adieu uh, was a meeting under the pretense of meeting with a variety of prisoners uh, they have set you up to have uh, meetings between your prisoners Alliance for your first meeting, an interview with Prisoner 13, and they have set up one of these storage rooms on the first floor of the prison uh, to be uh, an improvised meeting room with that prisoner. Now, why, you know, why not the actual meeting room? Uh, I don't think they bring the prisoners up to the meeting rooms. So that's why it's 10, it's 10 stories up, too. Mm. But there's oh. one right here. Meeting I'm just room. confused about the map, I guess. Wait, uh, which room is meeting room? Are you thinking of? Do, do, that, do, that meeting can room you see right that pinging? Mm, the map is big, uh, so I'm not sure where people on are. The pinging. On the left, it says meeting oh. room. It's All right, like south of the storage room you were going to meet us in. Apparently, I labeled that room as meeting room. Let me just consult. <laughs> what is that? What was that room? You know, I just I I just picked one of the side rooms. What was that moon room originally intended for? Do, do, do. Yeah, I'm. I'm genuinely the curious. secret escape room, maybe that we can escape from. Is there an escape room in this prison break? There's not adventure? an escape room. Oh. <laughs> yeah, mm. they were. You know, the Some guards, like, man. The guards were working on an escape room, and they accidentally <laughs> made a prison-themed escape room. And oh, the no. warden came in and was like, <laughs> and "Shut no it down." Uh -uh. Um. Uh -uh. All right. You know what? Guess what? I thought I had to improvise a meeting room, uh, in the storage room. There is a meeting room built into the prison. Thank you. Uh, th some people were paying more attention at the orientation than I was. Uh, so, yes. I had a very thorough orientation. Yeah. You know, it was like jumping jacks, yep. all sorts of stuff. Now, let's see what else we can get Tony to think that he agreed to in previous <laughs> yeah, episodes. Yeah, I don't know. That was, uh, I, I was impressed. I spent a lot of time prepping this today and apparently missed that minor detail that you all were like totally on top of. Um, I do have a question about the meeting room, especially since you just uh, mm, found it. Yeah. Uh, there appears to be a It is ladder. just, to be fair, down the hall from where I was going to assign, right, right. from the warehouse <laughs> right, I was right. going to put you in. And I do, you know what, let's just, we just imagine like you walk past the meeting room and the door is open and there's a conference table with a bunch of chairs and the, the guard takes you past to like a big room that's like just full of crates so there's got a couple crates that have been pushed into like a, a configuration to have a meeting and the lights are all flickery and you're like mm -hmm. can we just meet next door and the guard's like i don't know i'll have to ask and then yeah you get the meeting room um there is indeed a uh in the meeting room uh perhaps somewhat strangely there is a ladder and a hatch um to a i don't know guard post observation post on the uh kind of on the ramparts above the meeting room all right. That, I was just curious about that little that piece hatch. of architecture. Yeah, My, the meeting room is I've... does have a convenient fire exit uh, that takes you to the cold, inhospitable wastes outside Revel's End. Yep. My my. Since this meeting room is sort of like, it's like the shape of an arrowhead. It almost. is almost. And so I picture one of those really awkward conference tables. It's not one table. It's several long tables. And there's this big useless gap in the middle, except that that's where they put the projector. Mm. <laughs> and like, and uh, everybody's and no like facing it. each other at really weird, awkward the, angles. The cable I'm, management in here is horrible. 
I am thinking oh, of a very on. specific government me. developer in a meeting room. And that is what I am <laughs> guessing did onto I, this. Did I mention that I uh, worked for a large university and have spent a lot of time uh -huh. using <laughs> technology in rooms that uh, predated the knowledge of computers by like 20 years? Um, so... Yeah. I've been um, in meeting rooms at Microsoft. They're not much better. Oh, yeah, they're, <laughs> the chairs are more expensive. Um, <laughs> you know. Um, so, um, so uh, let's see. Uh, Xander, you have turned back. For, Norma has been abandoned because the heat is too hot on Norma. Uh, so you are back in your Stanley persona. Um, uh, Josh, you continue to be Ken, and Ken is mainly a false identity. Ken does not have a false. You you don't have the ability to look like someone different, uh, no. unlike some of our uh, some of our more magically inclined slash uh, hat owning friends here. Um, so you you have been escorted there. Your uh, with you is a charmed guard uh, who is uh, I believe his name is Phil. Phil Phil is going to be your uh, your kind of assistant uh, for for all things representing the warden, who I think you chose not to bring with you. Um, and uh, there has been kind of a, uh, you know, orders have gone out and, uh, you know, J Jay, you are in the main uh, guard area and you are mm -hmm. on shift when there's a kind of a special work order that uh, they need. They need uh, a pair of guards to uh, escort prisoner 13 uh, to the meeting room. Um, and I think you're available. I, have, I, have I am available. About yeah. where I am at this point. I couldn't actually mm. find myself on the map. Mm. So I'm not sure. Uh, just because if I happen to be doing rounds or something and heard that, uh, I would probably try to like extemporaneize like, oh, uh, I, I think I heard something about I was supposed to bring snacks or something for the There's... for the interviewers, not for the prisoner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I will. I found, I found oh, you there token. I yeah, there I found you are. Um, Where was I? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, they probably need, I, I mean, especially, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, sorry, I keep getting mixed up on people's multiple names, uh, Xanther and, uh, Josh, perhaps you'd like to order some, uh, some tea and crackers, uh, for your, for your meetings with the prisoners. Um, Krong, do you want to be doing anything while this meeting's happening? Krong just got up and walked away. Oh, so money let's pretend you away. didn't ask that yet. All right. <laughs> so I have I will... not asked that yet. I will. I, I'm still here. Then I would oh. like to like be the you know insert myself into the process to be the one to bring the tea and crackers or whatever. In, Done. However, I need to. All right, uh, Krong. Uh, a variety of people are making their way to that side of the prison to be in or adjacent to that meeting uh, when it happens. Uh, do you have any interest in that, or or like would you like to use this uh, opportunity to do other things in Revel's End? I would like to do other things in Revel's End. Okay. Should we start with you, Krong, or come back to you after the meeting happens? Uh, that's up to you, baby. <laughs> do you have a sense of how complicated the things you want to do are? <laughs> um, I was going to aim for like a quarter of the time that their meetings spent. So they should go first. Okay. Um, all right. So it has taken, I think, about 15 minutes uh, from when you have cast charm person uh, for the the meeting to be basically assembled, uh, the guard Phil uh, escorts um, uh, Ken and uh, Stanley and to the meeting room. Uh, th furniture is moved around, tea and crackers are sent for, and of course the order has gone out to escort uh, prisoner thirteen. Elsewhere in the prisoner, um, Le uh, Jay, you are with. Um, I believe that you've been you've been occasionally teamed with the surly guard Wentworth. Um, this is apparently a high profile enough thing that uh, the head guard Eula is there and you're you are basically taken over to to the uh, cell for prisoner 13 uh, that the, there's, you know, shouting going back and forth. Uh, the guards in the central uh, panopticon uh, mechanically operate the door to prisoner 13 cell uh, prisoner 13 steps forward. There's lots of guards around make sure uh, nothing happens and everyone is kind of supervised as prisoner 13 is, uh, you know, handcuffed and manacled and uh and chained up uh and then you and another guard uh kind of walk uh with prisoner 13 in between you over to the meeting room any questions about that process or things you want to try and make happen while that's happening i would like to 
wait for an opportunity to perhaps slide a message to Prisoner 13 mm. to say, I am here from the Golden Vault. Okay. Um, I I think you could easily uh, do that if you, you know, especially if you prepared the uh, the the thing previously. Let me uh, just remind you, uh, I think I described Prisoner 13 uh, in a previous session, but mm -hmm. here is art of a character meeting with Prisoner 13. So Prisoner 13 is a dwarven woman. She's got kind of pink hair uh, and she is covered in tattoos she has tattoos on her at least that you can see on her arms and neck and face uh and uh she you know she's on the short side because she's a dwarf but she looks uh pretty stout and pretty serious and this whole time she seems just completely unfazed uh by, what, by what's happening as you uh uh you know chain her up and uh, walk her from one side of the prison to the other Uh, and so, uh, Jay, you are perhaps, I don't know if you are surprised or not, uh, to find yourself walking uh, Prisoner 13 into a meeting room where uh, your some of your compatriots are seated at a conference table. Another compatriot is wheeling a uh, cart with tea and crackers in and setting them yeah, up. I, uh, my, and my there are a good number of other NPC guards as well, around as well. All right. My, I, my cart... Uh, is, you know, typical cart with a couple of different shelves. I tried to make it nice by taking like a big long tea towel to like sort of mm -hmm. go over it and over the side so that it sort of covers what would be on that top shelf. Okay. Like not the, like the, the first shelf. Uh, and as I wheel it in, since the snacks are supposed to be for the interviewers, mm -hmm. I will wheel it over right next to Josh. Uh, and it's sort of like just like, wiggle the 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 thing so that he can recognize that if he wanted to divest himself of the bag of holding uh, mm. and have it someplace a little bit less obvious than uh, a guest that might be considered sketchy at some point in the next <laughs> hour uh that a bag of holding could be slid onto that shelf mm. that is remarkably prescient wow <laughs> of lexi shrapnel that is that uh, is and so saves great. me Saves me the trouble of trying to do the uh, wild eye <laughs> gesture thing, but mm -hmm. subtly. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, at Every, the everyone in the meeting is making wild eye gestures. <laughs> yeah. Phil, Phil the guard My is acting. like, does the, everyone have something wrong with their contacts? What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> um, at the appropriate moment, Tony, I slide the bag of holding under the Give cart. me a very easy, I think we'd call this probably like sleight of hand uh, check. Um, I, I would also do something to be a bit of a distraction, like spilling a little bit of tea over by Xanter or something. With, mm -hmm. That sounds like help to me. You can make it with advantage. All right. Sounds good. I am When I say the easy, dice. I'm looking for 10 or above. <laughs> 22. Wow. Wow. Critical success. That. No one notices. It's like you did a, like a switcheroo. Uh, you know what? Maybe there was even, uh, you know, this is this is Lexi Shrapnel. Uh, Lexi Shrapnel had like another bag, clearly not a bag of holding, but you have just switched your bag of holding with like yep. a lesser messenger bag, uh, you know, uh, Indiana Jones style. So no one uh, no one even notices so like, hey, did you have a bag before? You still have a bag. That's how right. amazing it is. Uh Lexi Shrapnel, or as if we have to use your human name, Erica, uh, you get advantage for setting this whole situation up. Um, you mean inspiration? Yeah, sorry. Inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which you, did you can it. later use to get advantage. See, that's the third um, time I've the heard Tony give ever. inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> you know, every now and then somebody does something. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually you give it to people for doing something really reckless and stupid, and yeah. I don't usually do that, so I don't <laughs> get it very often. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you, hey, you're now getting rewarded for helping people who did something very reckless. And stupid. Oh, okay. Uh, I need to put this into my my usual yeah into your complicated yeah. flowchart of how mm -hmm. does Tony work. Um, yep. If you figure that out, let me know because I need you know <laughs> I could use some help. Um, uh, Levithia, I think this may be your opportunity to exit with the bag of holding at this point. It seems like your ability to hang out during the meeting might go, uh, might might attract some attention. Correct. Um, I think I will. I think I will see if I can continue around and like drop off other supplies that are maybe on the very bottom shelf of the cart to okay. other prisoners. If that makes sense at this point. Yeah, sure. 
So I'm not all before the way back she goes, the kitchen immediately. Oh, before before, before Lexi Shrapnel returns to the make kitchens. A, a you know, display of this as she's leaving, be like, um, can you just check back like every I don't know, half hour or so? See if we need anything. I don't I don't know if there's like yeah, keep the hot tea coming here. Yeah. There's it's not. really cold in here. Yeah. I, it is I'll bring refills. Yeah. Uh Great. that yeah. Everyone seems to think that that's a great idea, including uh, the other guards who uh, I have not named yet, who are lo- loitering nearby, uh, Phil and uh, his unnamed colleagues. When uh, Wentworth and Jay arrive with Prisoner 13 and March Prisoner 13 in. So, uh, Levithia, I think you would probably have the ability to loiter nearby uh, if needed, um, you know, at least for a short time, somewhat inconspicuously. But you know you're doing business on this side of the the, the prison, so you you know you you have you have a cover for any shenanigans you might get up to. Gotcha. So. All right, Jay and Wentworth march prisoner thirteen in. Uh, she's a dwarf. She's covered in tattoos. She's got pink hair and kind of a I don't know kind of a punk mohawky kind of look. I, I don't know. Somebody can tell me the exact name of that hairstyle based on the art that I've sent to you. Um, I guess it's not quite a mohawk, but uh, and she uh, she just kind of marches in looking relatively defiant, uh, given that she is um, handcuffed and manacled and shackled and takes a seat in clearly the, the chair indicated for her kind of in front of the uh, uh, the the conference table where uh, Josh and uh, Xanter have uh, have have positioned themselves. So I'm going to say that in addition to the player characters and prisoner 13, the other guards in this room are Phil, who is still charmed by, uh, by Xanter, um, Wentworth senior guard, who is uh, shift partners with Jay. And we'll say that there is one other guard who's hanging out nearby. Do I have more guard names? Surely I do. Surely uh, it is. Surely the guard. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, so three three other guards. And they're, you know, they're. I think they're all kind of looking at uh, uh, Xanter and uh, Josh kind of expectedly. Um, let's see here. Did we get a description? Do you need a description of Prisoner 13 or of something else? Uh, Xanter? No, Stout Spark. Oh, of Stout Spark. I don't know if you have that yet. Ignore that. I didn't think so. Ignore that. All right. Sorry. That's not from me. Um, talking to you. The players are master. using the Roll20 chat to uh, figure out side quests. That's fine. All right. Prisoner 13 kind of st- kind of glares around at all of you, spits on the ground and says, well, this is the worst job interview I've ever seen. <laughs> I have a bit of a crush on her. She's kind of awesome. If you were a tree, what would you be? Is that actually what Josh is asking? No. <laughs> oh, okay. If somebody asked me that in a job interview, I mean, I guess I would sigh to answer the question. But I'd like <laughs> to think that I would someday be the person that would walk out. <laughs> but let's... Weeping willow, it sounds like. Mm. Uh, I would not be a tree. I would be a something else. <laughs> Cactus. Mm. Cactus. Um, Correctly. Mm. A tree. A little story about plants later. Um, (laughs) Is a cactus a tree? I don't think it's a tree. But uh, that's a different. It's a bush. I believe it once. Oh. Uh, So, uh, Xanter and Josh, I think this is your your show, at least to kick off here. I will drink my tea Mm -hmm. and look to Josh. The, several of the guards have clearly disengaged and are look, you know, I mean, I think they're keeping an eye on prisoner 13, but clearly not paying uh, the interviewers any questions and any attention. Hey, the, the guards got tea, right? Yeah. They, they, okay. Was, I would like, was yeah, that tea I, drugged? Is that something you forgot to tell me about an hour ago? Um, I could have been there. Only, and thieves can't. Sorry. Yeah. Only mildly. Mm. Just enough to like, I don't want them falling down. I just want them very sleepy, like leaning against the wall. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, just I have experience in poisoning people. If you recall, from a I previous do recall. Adventure. Oh, I've known Mavithia a long time, and I does, didn't drink any tea. Do Xander and Josh know about this, or they? Slowly, it's not or... in their tea. It was oh, in the okay. Cups. I know what I'm doing. Okay, I just imagine if you drugged everybody and just like you know, 
you, you come back in 30 minutes and everyone's asleep. <laughs> it's the no, chillest, no, no. low-key uh, prison break. Um, mm-hmm. um, so you have scored yourself a meeting with Prisoner 13. You know that Prisoner 13 uh, is the person that ripped off the people that sent you on this mission. For you were sent on this mission by the Dwarven clan... Uh, the Axe Breaker Clan. Does that sound right? Um, mm-hmm. Prisoner 13 is believed basically stole the Axe Breaker fortune, locked it away in a vault. The Axe Breaker Clan has eventually, after years of work, located the vault, but is unable to break the magic seal on it. They want the answer to how did they get into the vault. Prisoner 13 has that, but they, you know, they were beyond the reach of uh, most people's means, except for you, you keys from the golden vault, who now find yourself face to face with prisoner 13. She so takes turns glaring to, at each of you. So we don't have to free her necessarily. We just need the information from her. Right. You don't know what the key is, whether it's a physical thing or mm. a idea or a thing. So, you know, un- unclear what you need to do to gain the cooperation or the help of prisoner 13. She continues to glare. I cough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what Stanley sounded like, so it'll mm. just sound like this. Mm. Um, <laughs> Prisoner 13, it's so great to meet you. My name is Stanley. This is Ken. We are from the Faerun Prisoners Liberties Association. And we're just here doing interviews with uh, everyone in the prison to make sure that everything's you know above board and you're being taken care of. I mean, aside from the terrible temperature, am I right? Could be warmer. I think I've been taken well care of here. Nothing, nothing but kind words to say about the warden and her goons. I'm sorry, her employees. Prisoner thirteen winks at uh at, at Jay. Jay winks back. Yep. Yeah. Uh, sensing that this is not an interrogation, uh, Prisoner 13 kind of like leans back, kind of starts rocking the chair a little bit. Looks looks real relaxed. Can I just start with maybe some of your history? Obviously, we can't get your name, but is this the first time you've been incarcerated? Have you been in other prisons around Faerun that you can kind of compare and contrast? Uh, well, this is this would be it. They only had to catch you once. Mm. Mm. Hope to hope to be the, my last, but you know, if I ever get out. I look to Ken. Do you have any information that you would like to get out of uh that we could share out of the uh out of the Revels End that we could, you know, share with important people uh for you? One of the things that we try to do is we try to be a bridge to the outside world. Prisoner 13 kind of looks over her shoulder at the several guards hanging around behind her and says, I'm good. <laughs> Crosses her arms. Are they paying attention? Are they enjoying their tea? Um, I mean, they're there, so they're not, you know, they are, I would say they are not paying attention, but, you know, you are being observed. Uh, does, does one of you want to give me a quick uh, arcana check on, uh, just, you know, on, on Prisoner 13? Um, I'm a plus can, two. Let's do it. Let's both do, do it. Um, yeah, let's both do it. It's a dirty twenty. Okay. Uh, it's it's a pristine four. A pristine <laughs> four. Uh, Dining. you know, Ken looking at uh slash Josh looking at Prisoner Thirteen tattoos. There sure are a lot of them. Uh, Xanter slash Stanley. Uh, you can't help but notice that these are. Uh, the, many of these tattoos covering uh, Prisoner Thirteen's arms and so on seem to have uh, arcane properties, uh, and you notice there are like runes worked into the tattoos on each of her fingers. Um, let me t- let's see. I think you're going to get the knowledge of one of these tattoos. Uh, da, da, da. I will tell you that that uh, you recognize uh, there's a tattoo on the side of Prisoner 13's face 
uh, that you know that you maybe you I don't know if you've ever seen one before, but maybe you've read about it. It's a powerful, very hard to acquire uh, magical tattoo known as a mind link tattoo that suggests that Prisoner 13 has the ability when not locked up in an anti-magic field uh, to communicate telepathically with people they choose. Hmm. Yeah. Does not have to be people. This area nearby. of the prison is anti-magic. I remember the cells were. The cells were set up with anti-magic fields. Uh, the meeting room is not. Interesting. Um, oh, you know what I've got? I have telepathic speech. Hmm. Which so, you, of course, could use on anybody, but I could, could be, and could I, be useful if you want to ten. convey a message that... Uh, you don't want Shirley or Phil or uh, Wentworth to overhear. Um, I won't make secret oh. that I'm looking at her tattoos mm -hmm. and then I'll just say, those are really interesting. Where did you get them? And then telepathically connect with her and say, uh, the mind link tattoo, who, who are you connected to? That's very interesting. Now, with telepathy, does she have the ability to reply to you uh, or it telepathically or or not? Is you just and the way? chosen creature can speak telepathically with each other while you are within four miles of each other. Uh, for how long? It lasts for four minutes. Oh, four minutes. Um, how she... uh, how distract how how challenging would be would distraction of you know me and her making small talk while she's having the real conversation with you be. Sounds uh, almost effortless given uh, the pretenses that you have set up here. So, I am happy to keep blabbing and, and asking her basic questions about how well she's treated and um, how how good the food is, etc. While um, Lincoln goes to work. All right. Uh, so she's, you know, uh, Prisoner 13 is trying to keep up the conversation uh, with uh, the kind of mundane uh, questionnaire uh, that Josh has prepared. But at the same time, having a four minute back and forth meeting of the minds with uh, Xanter. Uh, and, uh, you know, her her she her face kind of like seems like, well, this is the most interesting thing that's happened, uh, uh, if not today, in quite a while. And she messages back to you, Xanter. Here and there, I get around. Good eye. Thanks. Um, so now that we're connected like this, we're from the Golden Vault, uh, and we're here. Uh, they need us to find out what the key is to, uh, and I remember the name because you just yep. said it. The name of the vault that uh, Prisoner 13 uh, secreted away. Because for the characters, it has not been four months since we got here. Nope, it has not. Exactly. It has been, no. you know, <laughs> been but four hours. Um, and uh, you get kind of amusing uh, thought email back from Prisoner 13. Oh, the Axebreaker Clan. That was one of my first jobs back in the early days when I was making my bones. Um, I suppose I could remember the key to that particular uh, vault uh, if it was worth my while. I, I think that's why we're here, to make it worth your while. And then I say aloud, no, really? Huh. <laughs> Let's see. What do you have to offer? I'm really doing quite well for myself here. Oh, that's interesting. Well, we were sent by the Golden Vault and basically told by any means necessary I think we could bust you out if we had to. I mean, we're we're not super tough, but we're we're crafty. Oh, Do you not want out? You're too kind. I'm actually very comfortable here. Uh, this is this this the opportunity of Revel's End has given me the chance to meet with uh, some very helpful from professionals in my field of business, and my empire has only expanded. Um, I'm in no hurry to get out. Uh, but if you were interested in helping me, there is. One thing that I could use, um, the warden has a ledger up in her office. It contains all the names, the true names, the crimes, uh, and information on all the prisoners here in Revel's End. I would like to read that ledger. Mm. Bring me the ledger. You'll get your key. Uh, she kind of cuts off her conversation with Ken. 
claps and stands up, stretches and looks over at the two guards that marched her in, Jay and uh, Shirley and says, oh, sorry, Jay and Wentworth. And Shirley is just standing nearby. But Phil says, I think we're done here. Thank you so much, Prisoner 13. Ken, that was very illuminating, wasn't it? Uh, Absolutely. Wentworth moves forward to uh, check uh, Prisoner 13's shackles and motions uh, Jay for you to uh, to follow and escort Prisoner 13 back to her cell. As soon as they start to go, telepathic link to uh, Josh, and I convey what was told to me, and I say, I think we need to do a handful more of these interviews to to keep up the ruse, and then maybe we can regroup with the others. Mm-hmm. Uh, Phil is still here. Phil is still charmed by you. Uh, and he uh, he looks down. He's got a clipboard. I don't know. He's always been carrying a clipboard or if he ran off to get it and says, uh, who, who should who should we bring in next? We have some kind of ledger from the warden we got before. Didn't we get a list of the prisoners from yeah. her? Who, mm-hmm. who was it that nabbed that? Was it the two of you or was it Krong? It was not me. So one of you guys okay. has it. I think. Should... I will yeah. say it's not. It, you may have like so, uh, a sheet of information. You definitely don't have a yeah. ledger. But yeah. you okay. can get Neuro Stout Spark in here and give him the sending stone. Mm, mm-hmm. You certainly mm-hmm. could. Mm-hmm. If we knew what number Nero he, he was. What, the sheet you got has their I names believe, and yes. numbers on it. Yeah. Let's do this one. Pick a number hey. there. What number was it, uh, uh, Josh? It was uh, whatever number Noro Stotespark was. <laughs> there's yeah. not canonically a number. I'm asking you to provide a number for story <laughs> no. purposes. I rolled it's, a two. It's the right no. number. It's going to be a high number. Though. Number 42. All right, 242. Hey. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's a story we tell together, people. Uh, <laughs> Phil uh, run, takes run, jots down on his clipboard and sends Shirley uh, running off to the Panopticon to arrange for uh, uh, the next prisoner to be brought in. Um, now, I think that this is taken probably with setting up the meeting, having the meeting happening and moving around. I think this has probably taken a solid 40 minutes of your hour uh, that you have until uh, the warden... Uh, realizes what's going on does anyone want to debate me on my timekeeping uh no, no but be... um uh xanter did you happen to telepathically tell share with anybody other than me that we're on a clock i hadn't no <laughs> <laughs> so, i'm blindly off yeah who well, i'm uh, i'm going is... to be doing things during this meeting and that's yeah. going to have some effect yes. on something let's let's do those things now meanwhile Meanwhile, uh, on the other side of the prison, Krong slash Diogenes mainframe, maintenance worker to the stars, if by stars you mean prison staff. Um, Krong, what are you up to? Uh, I'm following the warden. Oh, okay. Uh, you have headed up. The warden is uh, up in the tower. Um, I imagine that, you know, as a maintenance worker during normal operations of prison, you can just come and go and, like, nobody pays you any mind. There might occasionally be a place where, like, you know, a guard has to unlock a door for you uh, uh, or, you know, a guard, you know, gives you a look over and then waves you past. But you are free to come and go. So you have headed, uh, I believe, up to to the Panopticon and up the stairs in the central spire. Uh, the warden, uh, I think, is just in her office, which is up on, like, the 10th floor of the tower. Um, and that's where you're headed? Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. If I did this right... Over here, do, do, do. Um, there is on tower level two. That's there. This is where you, somewhere near where uh, they had their meeting. Uh, that's where uh, uh, Warden Marthanis uh, keeps her, her office. So oh, you climb up. Uh, yeah, uh, I didn't. I can drag you all there. I don't know if that'll mess up your map recording though, uh, uh, no, Erica. Don't so do I don't. <laughs> don't do. I don't usually do that for roll twenty. I do that or for uh, DPK. I do that in other adventures where we don't care about map broadcasting. All right, Krong, you head up the stairs. Uh, there is. Uh, there's a kind of sleepy guard uh, st- stationed outside the door. Uh, I think we know his name is Nathan. Um, there's some cold. Uh, 
T uh, uh, sitting on a conference table that he fetched for someone who doesn't exist, uh, <laughs> Norma. And, uh, I, you know, without asking for any explanation, Nathan just holds the door open for the warden's office and uh, shows you in. Uh, I don't think you've seen anyone has seen the warden's office yet. So let me just describe it uh, really briefly. Um, let's see here. Uh, da, da, da. So beyond the uh, beyond the meeting room is the office. It's uh, you know it's kind of a small kind of wedge of a hexagon shaped room, and it is crowded with stacks of paper and basically kind of uh, wooden file cabinets that presumably hold more paper. Kind of right in the middle of it is a big uh, wooden desk piled with parchment and quills and ink. It is a little bit on the side of chaotic versus controlled mess. Uh, and the uh, the warden is is there kind of scribbling away at something uh, on, on her desk. Uh, but she looks up as you you come in. Uh, and she she looks at you as if she's trying to remember your name. And it's just saying, like, are, apologies. Are, are you are you new here? You're in great danger. I'm in great danger, you say. Why Why do you say that? To warn you about the great danger you're in. Uh, she gestures and the door behind you closes. <laughs> um, Major. <Excellent. laughs> I can drop this disguise now. And I replace my mild-mannered maintenance man disguise with a black knight. Oh, as full tall as I am as a bugbear, which mm -hmm. is seven or eight feet or something, I forget. Uh, shiny black armor standing straight up at attention. I suggest that you identify yourself immediately, and uh, the warden kind of ruffles rustles around in on her uh, uh, her desk. You see her that she seems to be reaching for a, uh, a spell book. I am from the Order of the Iron Sword. Krivnarixis is compromised. I toss the ledger I got from Krivnarixis's room onto her desk. Uh, she flips it open and uh, sees that it is indeed uh, one of uh, Krivnarixis, basically his his diary, his journal, all of his, his, his files. Uh, indeed, basically the confidential files of one of her counselors, one of the uh, uh, you know, people who stands on the adjudication uh, tr uh, committee and is responsible for the release of of prisoners. And how did you come to have this information? Please understand, I cannot share all the details. I do not know everything yet. All I can say is that Grivnerixius, the second I have to. Just uh, rereading re the side quest really quick. Yep. Uh -huh. Very important to get this right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Is going to vote against commutation for Atreus Firebrand. And I believe he has been threatened to do so. Well, I think I will have to have that vote canceled and send for new counselors to. Uh to do a process that will be uh, unimpeachable. That Sir, what can, what is your name? My name is Diogenes Mainbrain. <laughs> <That's true>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how can you not believe imposing. somebody named Diogenes Mainbrain? How can you not? I mean. <laughs> uh, this plan is very confusing. I'm a, a little unsure how it's going to play out, but uh, it is. it does technically sound like a plan. Um, mm -hmm. certainly multifaceted Diogenes uh, I thank you uh, I am I am but a simple warden but I have many friends I will make sure I have not, I'm not familiar with your order but uh, I trust that they are uh, creatures of good character there are other plans afoot in your prison may I ask what measures have you taken 
there are powerful anti-magic fields everywhere. Uh, the guards are, are, are well-trained and well-vetted. Uh, what, what plans do you speak of? If someone were to poison the food supply, do you have someone who tests the food? Do you have someone who checks on this sort of thing? Uh, what I'm doing right now, just so everybody knows, is I'm doing side quest to investigate the warden. Mm. Uh, the warden has a reputation as a law-abiding and fair bureaucratic mm. official, but the Golden Ball has heard some strange rumors regarding recent behavior, so I'm trying to like feel her out. Yeah, mm -hmm. the the warden seems just like uh, the food, but I mean, there's so many people to feed. If I can't trust the kitchen, who can I? She starts kind of like twitching, and then... Uh, Krog, what languages do you speak? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> it's always a good, good, <laughs> good thing to just like, like slow down some some uh, some conversation and role playing. What languages uh, do you speak again? Common, giant, and thieves cans. Well, I'm going to tell you with giant. Giant is similar uh, to dwarven, uh, and so Good you can. What? Well, yeah, that's. <laughs> 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 Deeply oh, offensive boy. when you know the, the, the racial history. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't think you can tell what uh, she is saying, but she seems to suddenly be uh, swearing, kind of uh, just swearing up a storm in Dwarven. Is there something wrong? Is there? Please send me on a quest. Uh, the the warden knocks a huge pile of papers off of her own desk and falls to the ground, twitching and shouting in dwarven. Hmm, this is where it would be nice if somebody had told me that I needed to get a ledger from the. It sure room. would. <laughs> if only people had uh, sending. Uh, uh, reach out. Yeah. To Krom, <laughs> the assistant mind. Nathan Krom, rushes into the room, pushes past, I guess. <laughs> um, I, well, I'll give you a chance. Uh, you hear the door open as. Oh, yeah, uh, back to mild marriage, yeah. people. All right. Uh, 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 Nathan, the, uh, the, the guard slash tea fetcher, uh, pushes past mild mannered Diogenes mainframe, uh, the maintainer, and rushes over uh, to, 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 to the warden. Uh, as he rushes past you, Diogenes. Diage yeah. Diogenes. Diogenes mainframe. As he rushes past you, Diogenes mainframe, you hear Nathan mutter under his breath, not again. And that, I think, is where we will pause uh, for this evening. Um, is that about right time-wise, Erica? We're like 10 minutes early, actually. Oh, well, what if that was a really great ending? <laughs> <laughs> if it's a great ending go with the ending um, yeah, i think fine. that is where we we'll pause we do not then. have to mm. yeah they don't have to be the same sometimes okay, there's cool. an hour and a half sometimes oh. they can be 45 minutes it's yeah fine. so wow. that is where we'll pause uh krong has successfully infiltrated uh the uh the warden's office and learned things Some stuff uh, others have made contact with Prisoner 13 and learned what uh, what they need to do in exchange uh, for 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 getting the information they want. It seems like they are well positioned uh, to possibly uh, close the books on this heist soon, except that it's probably only about 20 minutes until the warden realizes the, the effects of Charm Person and this whole prison goes into lockdown. What exciting facts will they learn in the next 20 minutes from the, uh, Prisoner 242 that you have uh, requested an, an, an interview with? Um, well, you'll hand him a rock that he, the Golden Vault sent you to hand well, him, at least. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was some Dungeons and Dragons. I'm hoping Don't forget that the next, join so us next time, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I would say that the Warden's behavior seems a little bit beyond confusion. So, yeah, it's weird. Um, yeah. But yeah, for um, editing purposes, can you do the usual outro? Yes. What is the usual outro? The usual outro is, uh, you know, you ask some questions. Oh, and, yeah. And you already asked the questions and you say for answers mm -hmm. to questions such as those. See yeah. Will they learn anything useful from their interviews with, uh, who are you actually interviewing? <laughs> this is great. 242. The titular character. No, no, no. You already you already did that. That You're going to interview Noros Stoutspark. That's him. 242. 
Will you learn anything exciting from your interview with a uh, secondary side character, prisoner Noro Stoutspark? Will the warden wake up from their strange fit that they're having on the ground of her own, very own office? And what will happen when the charm person spell finally wears off? Will they be interred here or will they be summarily, summarily executed out in the yard outside of Revel's End? Those are the only options for answers to questions <laughs> such as these. Tune in next time to Total Party Kill. Gulp. Gulp. I think you're doing right. quite well. So. Yeah, actually, things came together a yeah. lot better in this episode than I Monty expected that they the would. Clinch. <laughs> good work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And good point, Chip. I do need to tell everybody what's going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forgot I had I, telepathic Look, speech. look, I'm just standing outside Prisoner 13 and like braiding my hair like hers and <laughs> yeah. uh, trying to like mimic her tattoos because I think she's so cool. How do you That's mimic what I'm doing. tattoos? <laughs> well, because I, I have a that Sharpie? traveling tattoo. The, oh, the tra oh. Oh, that I have a traveling yeah. tattoo that helps me disguise myself, that's, but I can move yeah. it around at will. Mm. This is one hell of a meet cute on tail. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep. J how many if cults you two are together by the end of this <laughs> uh all of them honestly you yeah. give me a cult i'm gonna join it yep. speaking of disguise i'm really looking forward to using my boots of false tracks to mm. leave Ooh. behind Ooh. the exact footprints of whatever i am disguised as <laughs> that's awesome that's a pandy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh well live stream slash bootleg thank you uh for listening um we will uh we will be back we actually have already scheduled stuff so we know we will be back we know it has been a long time and we were a little rusty it had literally been four months since we played i we think have we were great i think you did well considering <laughs> um i felt just like i did not have all of the memories of all the npc names uh or even player character aliases fully I didn't, imprinted the day into after my we head. learned them they were gone yeah. <laughs> yep that's how it works uh but i believe our plan is to be back on may 14th which is about a month from now um and that that might be the conclusion of the adventure you never know what will happen here mm -hmm. uh at Rockfall. total party kill rocks uh, but thank you for uh thank you for listening and hanging out with us and we will see you next time Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.